Hi and welcome to this The Tech Geeks video. Today we're going to be asking the question, what do I need to run Ubiquity Cloud Gateway Ultra? Quite a mouthful. So let's start with what is the Cloud Gateway Ultra? This is the Cloud Gateway Ultra. It's really simple. It is a multi-WAN router with the Ubiquity controller built into it. So let's set the foundation here. To run Ubiquity Unify hardware, we need to have a controller of some type to manage it. This can be the app downloaded on a mobile phone. This can be software you download on your computer, or it can be a device that runs one of the um, Ubiquity OS applications. So it could be a UDM SE, a UDR, a UDM Pro, all of those types of things. Unify Express, for example. They are all different components, but the main component that we need to run is called Unify Network. That covers the switches, the access points, and the Ubiquity routers. The problem we have when we download the software uh, or uh, the app on our phone is it's linked to that phone. So if you've done, done this for your parents or done this for a client, when you move away, they can't change the config without access to that computer. So ideally, we want the controller on site. Up until recently, there hasn't been something that we can do easily on site that's cost effective other than maybe by the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, um, which has a hard drive built in and it might be overkill for what that customer needs. We saw the Unify Express released recently at the point of recording this video at the beginning of 2024, which is an access point, the uh, Unify controller application, uh, it runs that as well, and um, a small router. This is the one we've probably been waiting for, the Cloud Gateway Ultra. Why? Because in this is a Unify Network. So this only runs the Unify Network. It has no storage built into it. So we can't run Unify Protect or Unify Access. This is just Unify Network. So access points, switches, and routers. This is a multi-WAN router. So we can have two WANs plugged in, one for failover. All right. It's not a wireless access point. All right. But we do have a little switch built into it as well. So that is what the Cloud Gateway Ultra is. Okay, so in the box, what did you have? You had a, a power pack, all right, depending on which country you are in, should have been changed. We're in Australia, they come with a European, but we swap it out for an Australian power pack. You will have a small ethernet cable, all right, and the device itself. So let's get this plugged into the main. So I'm gonna just plug that in um, over there. All right, and I'm going to grab one of my internet facing uh, connections here and plug that into the WAN port of the device. So as you can see on the bo bottom, we've got our power in here, our USB-C, our WAN, and then these are our LAN ports. So this goes out to my router, so I'm just gonna plug that um, in there, and I'm gonna plug the uh, mains power in on this side. And what we should see once I plug the, turn the mains power on, Hopefully in a moment we will see something happening on the screen, all right, as this actually um, starts up. There you can see the U is starting up, all right, and I'm just going to switch on over here to my mobile phone and hopefully record what we see going on here at the same time. So that's just going to sit there probably for a little bit. Um, I often notice for three or four minutes sometimes these devices take um, to boot but I'm just going to put that down to the side and um, we've got recording running here on my phone. You want to get the app all right so here's a few things you will need to have logged in to uh, unify.ui.com and created yourself an account there. This is part of what's called an OS console so it will report back to that um, and so we need an active account in there. You will then install the Unify Network app on your phone, all right, and have logged in, all right. I'm going to um, add this um, to probably one of our new accounts um, shortly, all right, but I've actually logged into my Spinel account. This is actually uh, where I have all of my things um, set up. Let me just show you the front of the unit. It's progressing very slowly. You can see it's just got a little indicator um, there going on. In a few moments, what I'm hoping will actually now happen is that the Bluetooth beacon in this device will actually start up, all right? And on my mobile phone here, it's gonna to say to me, it has found a new device. So just need to be patient while this bit happens, all right? And then we should be able to connect to it and get going. 
All right, as you can see, so if we have a look at the front of the device, it actually says, I don't know whether it will show on the screen, ready to set up. All right, and um, on the device on my phone here, I'll show you on the video recording as we go through, it's actually saying uh, waiting to adopt. So I'm just gonna choose uh, set up and it's now going to connect to the device. It will probably ask us which Unify account we want to put in if you're not already in that Unify account and it'll ask us what we want the name for it. I'll just call it the Cloud Gateway Ultra because that's just as easy um, to keep it as it is. All right, it's testing my internet speed. It's already, I'm on a 500 meg internet connection here. Uh, we would expect this probably to give us a, at least a gig and I hope to show you a little bit later on some speed tests um, that we've done just so you can see um, what speed we can test this at as well and we'll put that up on the screen. Um, so it's just gonna go through and test um, what's going on there. All right, and hopefully once it's done that, it wants to know what it can set all the profiles up. We can have next, it's setting up the OS, all right, and it's just reminding me I can find this in unify.ui.com as well. So what's the idea? Log into unify.ui.com, you will see your controller there. So that means you can access it from, as long as this is connected to the internet, you can access it from anywhere. All right, so you can actually see on the front uh, that it's now just said um, setup is complete. And we can say now go to the dashboard. This is really the main thing that we are already there. So it's now gonna go and probably do a firmware update. The controller now is ready to go. The routing has happened, we've seen it at the internet. If you're setting up this for the first time, can I suggest that you do it this way? You plug it in to your current internet service provider's router and get it running. Why? Because this by default will have a LAN IP address of 192.168.1.something or other. The likelihood is that your ISP is probably giving you on the LAN side something very similar, especially if you're on Starlink. So let's get this connected to your current router to be able to get it online and working. Once it's got online and working, then you can go through and change the IP range to something that won't conflict with what's going on. So I'm just gonna wait for this to run through doing the firmware update and come back to you in a moment. Um, and I'm gonna get a couple of other items ready that we can maybe plug into this um, to adopt at the same time. Uh, so as you can see, it has come uh, to the completion of that. All right, uh, might be able to just see it on the screen here, if I can keep it out of the light a little bit. There you go. Um, that it's actually starting to show you more useful information of download and data that's going through it. All right, so I can now click to go to dashboard. We have now created or got this to the initial stage where everything is basically working and functioning. There are a lot of settings that you can go through in this. Um, and I will show you some more of those in a little bit when I jump to the computer to um, show you the speed test and a few other bits and pieces running on it. Um, but most of those are actually now done through um, settings if you want to and you can work all the way through these. So what I'm gonna do is actually run a wireless network. So we've done our basic bit of routing. I'll show you how to change some of the IP address settings and stuff like that shortly. But I want to actually just show you how to add another access point um, to this. So we're just gonna create a very simple network called the Tech Geeks. All right, and I'm just gonna put a password in it here. All right, and add it. So that is all I've needed to do to add a wireless network. Now, this router, this, this here, is not a router, oh, sorry, not a wireless access point. So we need to add an access point. So I've actually got on the bench uh, here uh, an AC, uh, Pro it is, um, access point. I'm just gonna plug that in using a PoE injector um, and then plug that into one of the extra switch ports on here. So this runs out from my PoE injector, probably won't be able to reach that there. Um, and I'm just gonna plug this into one of the other spare ports that I have on here. So I've just plugged that in, all right, and I'm just gonna tell it to boot up. So I'm just gonna supply, apply some power to it. And I can actually now go back to devices. So what you'll see in here, we've got a number of different devices. At the moment, we've only got our cloud gateway that we can manage from in here. It shows you what switch ports and everything else are connected um, on there. Um, the light LED has gone out, actually, because I'm recording this before eight o'clock in the morning. I'm waiting now for my access point to power up. And once that powers up, I should actually see it in here to be able to adopt it. So we're just gonna give it a minute while it starts up. All right, so actually while I was waiting, it's just hit eight o'clock. 
um, and the LCD screen, just show you there, hopefully it's come back um, here. All right, has actually just come back on again. There you go. All right, um, but it just took a couple of moments as well for my access point to boot. It's now booted and if we actually look in the app, we can see it's pending adoption. So we highlight this and we choose adopt a device. What does this do? This is now going to send the config that we've set up for the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi name and everything else is going to push it um, to that device. In fact, what actually happens is the access point collects it from the controller and regularly um, checks in. So that will now go through and once it's done it, it might decide it needs to do a firmware update as well. That will actually go green in our list of devices here. Um, and we'll actually be able to see um, everything is set up and running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over to the computer um, and actually show you some of the other bits around the console because it's a little bit easier now to access it that way round. Um, I'm going to add in a second internet connection um, and we're going to watch that um, when we unplug it and see how it fails and works as well. All right, so hopefully this is going to be useful just to walk you through now these final steps. This is really how you've got and got it to a point where it is actually all working and you could now um, take your current ISP's router out and plug that in. Um, let me just show you, um, you might have um, actually some settings, um, not in here, on the um, WAN um, side. So let me just go back and we go to uh, internet. So just so you can see, I've used the app going settings and internet. And we've got a primary internet connection here that you can see we can go into. We can choose it to have manual, all right? And maybe we've been given a VLAN by our ISP. Um, maybe, in fact, we're getting our IP and details, we have to send what's called a PPPoE authentication. So we can again put our username and password that we've been assigned by our ISP in here. So what I like to do is I do like to try and set these up already connected to a router that works so that I know I've got the config and everything um, working. Do be aware of that different in IP ranges as well to make it work and you might have to plug into the LAN side to make some changes. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of that um, in a moment on the computer. Um, do remember that if you're here in Australia and you've got a provision, maybe it's fiber to the property or something like that, and you're gonna swap this router out, for some ISPs, internet service providers, it can take up to about 30 minutes for them to realize that a specific router is no longer connected to the network, all right? And so sometimes when you do change it over, you think, oh, it's all work, it's not working, it's not working. Often you have to wait for about 30 minutes um, and you will actually find then that your box on the wall has realized the router has changed and will then start providing internet to your new device as well. So let's hop on over to the computer and I'll show you the next section of what we're going to do. Okay, so I've just hopped on over to my PC. Essentially, all I've done is I've plugged a computer into one of the spare ports on our Cloud Gateway Ultra. Um, so it's picked up an IP address and I'm recording a session um, on this. So our first thing now we want to do is maybe know what IP address we need to connect to. If you're not sure, then we look for the gateway. We can run this command called ipconfig uh, from a command prompt um, on your computer. And we're looking for this IP address, 192.168.1.1. So let's start up a browser. Let's go to 192.168.1.1. All right. And it may have prompted us that the certificate wasn't secure. That's okay, you're doing this on a local network. It's just because it's not issued by an authority. It doesn't matter, it doesn't make any less secure. You might think, I don't know my username and password. Well, your username and password currently is actually the username and password that you use to create your unify.ui.com account. All right, so if we log in with those um, details, it'll bring us into the dashboard, very similar to what we uh, see in um, the mobile device itself. We just see it laid out very slightly differently. So I'm just gonna walk you through some of the, the few uh, basic things that I like to get right in this, um, and then we'll actually look a little bit further um, from here again. So console settings, um, you've got options to run in backup, you've got options here to change your um, local um, time zone. We've enabled remote access, which is fine. And we've got options to factory reset and move ownership if you want to as well. So those are very uh, basic. Here's your night mode. This is where it turns the screen off, all right? And doesn't turn it back on again till eight o'clock in the morning. So that's one good place to go if you don't want to panic yourself in the morning that you've broken uh, things. Unify devices. This is actually the access point that we adopted earlier. And admins and users, this is our first starting point. So at the moment, you only have a uh, 
unify.ui.com account. What you might like to also do is choose and add a local user in here. All right. Um, and if you create a local user and give it super admin access, um, if you choose this option here, restrict to local access only, and you can now create a username and password. So maybe we had uh, tech geeks. Um, um, okay, so evidently it wants some certain things in here. So let's maybe make that capital T, right? This will be an account that has access locally. So when I add this user in, uh, when I came to this screen a minute ago, if even if I'd broken or lost my unify.ui.com account, this user would be my super user and I could actually log in um, and actually use this um, to set up the devices and manage the device. So that's our back door. You can also do clever other things. You've got friends and family you'd like to invite. You can click on here and you can put their... Uh, uh, email address in for, the, for their unify.ui.com account. And it does mean that when they log in then to their account, unify.ui.com, they will actually see your controller and can access it as well. Can be useful, especially if you're doing some um, things for maybe customers or other families um, that have gone. As you can see, the only application this runs is Unify Network. Inner space is all about mapping out um, the walls and everything and working out where your Wi-Fi uh, is properly. So that can be quite useful as well. All right, so that's basically our bits to do with the console. Um, you can do your backups um, and everything here if you want to um, and push them some of the time out into unify.ui.com as well. Then we have our Unify network. So this is very similar to what we were looking at in our app. This is our dashboard. Our dashboard shows you everything that's actually going on. If we go to devices and go into devices, here's our um, access point that we added um, earlier. We can see everything about it maybe go into settings and change its name if we want to there, change how it's operating, turn its LED on and off and all of those bits and pieces as well. Then we come down to settings here. All right, and in settings, we've got our Wi-Fi, um, which we set up using the app, um, but you could have done uh, from in here if you'd wanted to, and you can make changes um, from uh, this if you want to, and um, oh, you can go into it. Um, and change what you want to be set up, change how it works, uh, all of those type of configs that you might want to. Then in networks, networks we can create VLANs. If you're wanting to try and do some slightly more in, um, enhanced networking, you're going to do it that in here. I'm not going to really cover that in this video. It's not so relevant. And your internet, all right, that we talked about before. So at the moment, we've got a primary internet connection here. Um, and uh, this is set up in this way. But we can actually... Um, configure this if we want to um, by clicking on it um, it's picked up an IP address automatically but we could have chosen manual and set a whole load of different information in there so I talked about showing you how this resulted with a speed test maybe to start with so we have something called iperf iperf is a little server that we run now we've only got this on a one gig connection all right so when we do this speed test anything that's close to 800 and above 880 meg a second and above generally allowing for um, uh, overheads that you have in networking and the limitation of a gig port that will show us that we generally can do one gig a second so if we just run this um, command which hopefully will run for us it's going to create five streams and it's going to give us some ideas like 829 835 861 845 888 so that gives me an idea, we can run it again to get another idea that really without any security services running, because we can in turn on intrusion prevention, there's a 904 in there, um, we are getting really a gig a second through this device. So it is actually operating in the way that we would expect it to be. What I want to just talk to you a little bit about is security. So security in here um, is uh, about uh, suspicious activity if you want to. So let's turn on suspicious activity monitoring and leave it in the automatic stage. So this is looking for intrusions. This is looking for things that really we wouldn't want to be running on our network. This involves CPU and RAM, all right? And as a result, will generally restrict throughput. Now, please do understand this. This device does have a 2.5 gigabit a second uplink. If you have a faster internet connection that can make use of that, you will probably see results faster and probably over the gig from what I'm showing you at the moment. But the limitation when we have a gig connection, 
we have all of our testing and switching takes a bite out of it. The hard drive speeds of the testing take a bite out of it. Um, and that's why we aim to show you it closer to that 880 to 900 and above will show us that it's really doing a gig. But what I want to show you this is when I've turned the security services on, and let's run that test again. All right, let's see what we're doing. So 808, 766, 830, 845, 805, 875, 788, 710. All right, so it is, let's run it again. We're getting less of those high 800s. We are getting a little bit more between the high 700s and the low 800s. Now, that means that the security services are taking a bit of a hit. The reason it goes up and down in speed is that it's trying to decide if it's a threat or not. All right. So in general, um, we've, you know, we've just transferred almost a, a gig of our information in that period of time. So you do have to remember that actually um, that's quite a lot. So over a bit of time, you won't really necessarily see this impact. Um, but you probably, if you've got security services turned on, I would think that you're probably not going to see a true one gig connection running um, there just from that basic test. But this is a very basic test. It doesn't allow for normal usage um, habits. We're still seeing 914 there. We're still uh, So we can see it does fluctuate probably when it's worked out whether something is a threat or not. So I think you're going to still get close to a gig. You're going to lose maybe 40, 50 megasecond with security services turned on in auto. Obviously, you could set this in advance and you could hammer this away a little bit more. So do be aware it will have a little bit of impact on what you are doing. So that shows you a little bit more about the security services and throughput that we would see. If you've not used to uh, the controller at all, here give you an idea. This is how uh, you see and you can see applications and different devices that are connecting. In our topology, it's going to show us uh, PCs and access points and how it's all actually lined up um, together, which is quite useful, especially when you've got actual end devices and what they're doing. Our device list is all of our devices that we have that are Ubiquity devices. Remember, this Cloud Gateway Ultra can control up to 30 Ubiquity devices, so that's really useful. And in clients, we can see what's going on, but we can do more than that. We can click on these, and we've got options to rate limit them and rename them or name them so we always know what that computer was, for example. And then we've got settings down here. All right, in uh, settings, we talked about this. We went through all of the different options um, in here of your Wi-Fi networks. Um, and you do have an option in, in here where we might have something um, called uh, sites, but we'll have a little look um, if we've got that option in here. Sites really allows us to restore um, some of the backups um, that we might have. So some people have asked the question, can we bring across our previous configs into uh, something like this? Well, I would hope that you would be able to. Um, if we come back out here um, and have a little at our console settings, um, it doesn't immediately look like we have um, the options that we would see before, which is uh, called setting uh, sites. Uh, sites allows us to set up multiple uh, different uh, Wi-Fi interfaces, if you like, or networks, one, one for a granny flat, one uh, maybe for my business, one for my home, and run them at, off the same controller as uh, individual application. So we don't seem to have immediately that. I would expect it to be in here uh, if it was. So I'm just having a little look to just see um, if there's anything in here to show us the site manager, um, but it's not something I can immediately see. Doesn't mean that it's um, not here. Um, but uh, let's have a little look and see, obviously, if we go into uh, this, do we have any other options into here to export the config? No. So all I can really see is um, the actual way to export um, the config right the way back at the beginning um, under system, for instance. Um, we might be able to do it or under backups here. Um, so it would depend on whether you have what type of backup file you have by the looks of it. Um, so let's have a little look and see what it's looking for. It So it's looking for a UNF file, which could be likely. So you could potentially export a UNF file um, of your current site um, uh, that you've already got in a cloud key or something like that. And you may well be able to import that into here. Like I said, this is only a quick, brief look round, but that's where I would expect it. This is not. This is about unifying network in here. It is not about um, the actual system, which is... Um, 
back here where we're doing a backup and that's actually of the whole system including the firmware and everything else what we're looking at is actually in this device um, and its settings so it doesn't look like we can maybe have necessary lots of multiple sites can change it to 24 hours here which is a little bit more useful um, but let's just have to have a check in here so this is really just what's going on in backup so it looks like it's going to manage a single site but if you've got a single site you can go into sites in your current controller and choose export that should give you a U unf file which you should be able to restore into here now the other thing i was just going to talk to you about is your local networks and then we'll do a failover test so if you have starlink or something like that um, you will have had to have configured this router and you'll probably think that it's not working because you will have plugged the WAN into Starlink and your LAN into the computer you're in now and you would have tried to get to the internet and it wouldn't have worked. That's because your Starlink runs in the range 192.168.1. And your device here on the LAN, as you can see, runs in the same. So you need to plug a computer into the LAN port of your cloud uh, gateway ultra. Go into the interface like we've done now and come to networks. Um, and look at your default network, all right? And we can now change um, what's actually going to happen in here. So um, I turn auto scale off. This is the IP address of your actual device itself. Um, so we might now uh, change this to uh, two dot, all right? You'll see down here it's changed your IP range as well. And then you can hit apply. And what this will do is actually re-IP uh, the LAN interface of this device. This means that the IP up here will change, so you'll probably think you've broken it, but you need to now go back to, in this instance, 192.168.1.2 to allow you back in. But now your IP range on the LAN interface, the bit that you connect your computers to on the Cloud Gateway Ultra, is different to what you have from your ISP router or your um, Starlink router, and as a result, routing can happen. All right, so that's probably one of the changes you will need to make if it doesn't seem to always look like it's going to work for you. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, add in a, another internet connection to this, all right, and then show you the, the failover uh, for that working. So I'll just quickly pause the video while I plug that cable in, and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, so I have plugged another internet connection into port four of the device. So if we go over here and actually have a uh, look, I'm happy to leave this because I didn't want to change it. You'll actually see that port four has come up. It's actually quite clever in the fact that it, what it works out is that it's from a different internet connection, or it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's from a different connection or a different IP range, um, but port four is the one that I uh, really want to use in this instance. So I might have to actually give the unit a few moments um, to change because I had to just change the IP range um, on it. Um, so this possibly hasn't actually picked up the IP range that I need it uh, to, um, but hopefully it will pick up its IP address in a moment. Okay, so port four, is our failover port. As standard, it sits there as disabled, as you can see. So we're going to just drop this down and choose which port we're actually going to use as our secondary. So let's enable um, that port. Um, and we'd hope uh, that it can actually do this. And it hopefully in a few moments will actually show us an IP address in here as well and show, hopefully show it as active. All right, so we're just going to watch and see what's um, happening. There you go. So it's gone to active. I'm hoping that it'll pick up now a different IP address. All right, so um, we'll wait for that just to become active. We then have some options in here. We could l run automatic speed tests if you want to, to allow it to work out what speed it can get down each internet connection. And we've got options here of, are we setting this as a failover or is distributed? What does distributed mean? Maybe you've got two different internet connection speeds. You want to primarily put everything over the first one. Um, but if it over utilizes the second, you actually want to uh, push it over onto the other one. So you could set the weighting between the two if you want. Really what I'm interested in, in this instance, is um, failover. We can see this has now picked up a different IP, all right, and we're actually active. So. How are we going to show that this is going to work? What we're actually going to do is the following. So we're just going to run a ping. All right, so we, a ping is just a asking for a response from a server. We're going to ping Google server. All right, we're getting 15 milliseconds down the connection that we've got, and we can see that it's 
active. What I'm actually going to do is um, simulate the uh, unplugging of the cable because I'm actually going to turn the switch port off um, that it's connected to. So I'm just going to um, push that to off now, just two seconds. All right. Um, it probably will take a moment. So in a moment, we're going to see this um, internet connection drop. And the idea that should happen, it should drop. And then a few moments later, um, we should see it try and reconnect up. So let's just have a little look and see what's happened on this. Now, the way I'm actually connected to this uh, session probably is not going to help us see what's happening. Um, so this uh, session has actually ended. Um, and so I'm going to need to reconnect to it. And hopefully we can see that it has then switched over. All right, so I'm back into my session. Let's just stop this, and I don't know see how far we're going to be able to go up. So obviously, I lost internet connection because um, I'd pulled the internet connection cable. You can see we dropped one ping there, all right, and then it switched over. In the test that I've got, um, we've actually I've actually seen this take about 18, or so take about 25 seconds in total. But as you can see here, we're now actually running on this uh, secondary connection. So I lost it, but it switched over. Um, I'll show you a little other one uh, in the, of a screen grab. I'll show you of me looking at the PC at the same time as this happened. And actually, you can see there around about um, the 30 to 40 seconds it took to actually switch from one to the other. But it at least actually shows you that the change does happen. All right, so obviously, I lost connection um, because I'd failed this over. Um, I'm just going to um, re-enable that port again, but you can see that we're just running here on the secondary um, port. So let's just get that other port back and active. But I will just show you on the screen here now um, just a little clip of what actually happened. You can see um, that when we pulled the power or pulled the uh, connection, you can see that the ping stopped. Um, it seemed to drop for about 25 to 30 odd or a little bit more seconds in total and then it came um, back online. So it did what it needed to do, failover. It wasn't necessarily super fast, but it did at least actually um, swap over. You can see now that I've actually plugged in the other line. Um, because I'm doing this remotely, um, this is why it does keep kicking me off. If I was behind it, I would see a more seamless um, solution actually going on. So we'll just wait for that to just come back online and hopefully we'll then see both ports as actually active. Um, I'm just checking that I have configured and um, pushed this port to active um, and it should come online in a moment and we'll just reconnect and that will just have shown us the walkthrough um, of everything that we needed to do to get this Cloud Gateway Ultra running. So we can now see that we're back and we've got two, we've got our primary one is running and our secondary uh, here is as well. So we're actually back and functioning as we should do. So I'm hopefully that gives you a good run through from the beginning of how to configure a Cloud Gateway Ultra um, using the app, um, then moving over to adding an access point and joining that in. And then once we've done that, um, again, we've moved to the computer and we've run through how to get a local user added in there, how to, um, test for some of the security settings and change the performance and monitor how that's actually going as well. And then show you the failover as well. Why don't you head on to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more videos on uh, what do I need to run Unify Network or what do I need to run Unify Protect. So why don't you subscribe and stay up to date.